Hey everyone, in this quick tutorial, I'm going to be explaining what an investment strategy is, what um, the different pie charts that you get inside your account mean, and as well, I'm going to be talking about the three things that you should be thinking about when you're selecting an investment strategy or an investment option, um, say if you're uh, in a superannuation fund or something like that. Okay, so what is an investment strategy? Most people's interaction with an investment strategy comes when they're selecting their super fund. So they select the fund that they want and then they go into the account and they choose the types of investment that they want to make. So typical uh, strategies that you might have are defensive, balanced or growth. Uh, let me just explain quickly the different um, elements of, that go into the pie chart and then we'll decide on what's most appropriate or how you can think about what's most appropriate of course. If you need expert help, you should be seeing a financial advisor because that's, this is where they add a lot of value. Anyway, let's talk about the most common um, strategy you'll see when you select your super fund. Defensive. Every super fund has a defensive strategy. They might go into a slightly different label, but everyone has a defensive strategy. So you'll go in and there'll be a, you'll go into your member account and there'll be a, a pie chart like this. And these are just rough guidelines, but you know, most of them will be pretty similar, although I'll have ranges that are close to this. So in this strategy, we've got 30% invested in shares. So remember a pie chart is 100%. So 30% of whatever money you have would be invested in shares. 30% would be in fixed interest, bonds or credit. Um, they might go into slightly different things. So this might say Australian fixed interest, international fixed interest. I'll get to what they are in just a second. Um, you might have 15% in cash and then you might have 15% in something else. Um, and this other section is sort of like a catch-all and it includes things like infrastructure or uh, alter alternative assets or things like that. We call these, in finance, we call these different options asset classes. So shares are one asset class, um, fixed interest is another asset class, etc. Now, you can see from the pie chart here that about a third of it is in shares. That's Australian or international. Shares are considered to be riskier. So in a defensive strategy, you would expect to see less shares than, than more conservative um, investments. So bonds or fixed interest, um, particularly um, if these are bonds, are investments that are issued by the government typically, or big businesses. Uh, so they're typically seen to be safer investments, um, but you don't get the huge return that you might associate with say shares. So this type of strategy, um, you can expect to have more fixed interest cash um, and cash than these two other elements here. Now, when I say cash or when a professional uh, investor says cash, they don't just mean a big pile of cash sitting in the office at the super fund. What they mean is that could be cash in savings accounts or term deposits or something like that. Okay, so what's the big picture here? The big picture, if you, if you go back and you look at the strategy over many years, some statisticians or financial experts might say you can expect a negative return, so a year when the overall investment goes backwards from all of these things in about one of every six years. Okay, so one in every six years on average, there's no hard and fast rules with this stuff, um, you could expect it to go backwards. Moving on, a balanced strategy. This is very common. Um, and I think it is required of almost all super funds in Australia that accept new members to have a balanced strategy. You might go under a slightly different name, but balanced is um, the, probably the most common. It's probably even more common than defensive now that I think about it. Um, so let's look at the allocations as we call it. Where is the money allocated or spread out? 50% uh, is in shares. You can see, remember we said that they're more risky than bonds. So in a more balanced strategy, you have more risky investments and less conservative investments. So you got 20% in bonds, 10% in cash, 20% there. Um, so what can you expect from a risk perspective? Well, you might expect, say, one in every five years for this investment to go backwards. And obviously, that's more often than this one. So this is one in every five or 20% of years go backwards. Um, and that's because there's more risk in the portfolio. Last one, a growth strategy. This is can also be called high growth or something like that. Um, so you can see... Here we've got more shares. Uh, we have about 75%. 75% of the money invested in shares. Remember that's, remember that's Australian or international shares. 15% uh, in this other, which is, as I mentioned here, it could include things like um, infrastructure or alternative investments. 
um, which are quite popular in Australia at the moment. And the risk associated with these varies quite a lot. So if you go into the, um, your account, you'll be able to see what types of investments these are and you could probably speak to a professional about understanding the risk associated with them. There's a little bit less in cash and there is a little bit less in bonds, but there's still some in there. So what can you expect? About one in every four years, you can expect the portfolio to go backwards. So we go from one in six all the way up to one in four, which is riskier, less risk, riskier, less risk. Um, so, okay, this is all great and I've just bored you to death with all these different strategies and understanding what they mean. Who cares? Well, the number one thing in investing and in finance within in the financial markets in general is that there's the old adage that you buy low and sell high. Yet what we see with most people is they buy high and they sell low. Because what happens is they think that I'm going to go with a growth strategy because I'm a growth investor and I want the best return for my money. But then, oh no, it's fallen 40%. What do I do now? I'm scared. I sell out. And then what you do is you miss any potential recovery in that investment strategy. So when you select these, it is so important to consider the risk. This thing right here. Focus on the risk first, not the potential return. So what influences your decision about the risk? Well, if, if you speak to a financial professional, they'll tell you things like it's um, to do with your, 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 I suppose, your personality, your behavior, um, how much money you have outside of your superannuation fund, for example, um, how reliant you are going to be on this money, um, and a whole range of other factors like your temperament is super important. So they'll try and take that into account when they do a thing called a risk profile and then a fact find and all that sort of fun stuff. But an overriding principle here is understanding time. How long do you have to invest? If you have a longer time horizon and you're the type of person that thinks, hey, I'm willing to write out some pretty bad stuff in order to achieve a better return in 10 or 20 or 30 years, a riskier strategy might be all right for you. If you have, say, just 10 years to invest, a balanced strategy may be most appropriate. Or if you think I can't handle um, a, a 50 or a 60% crash, um, I might handle, say, a 40 or a 50% crash, you might go here. Now, if you have less than that, say if you are reliant on the money or you have less than 10 years to invest, you might go with something more defensive. Um, so people uh, approaching retirement might be more inclined to use a defensive strategy because they're about to step into that part of their life where they're going to rely on the money. And obviously this is all just general information. You should speak to a professional if you are really concerned about this, like if you're approaching retirement, if you have a need for the money, etc. This is one of the biggest decisions you, you'll make if it is the only investment you have. So it could be the biggest financial decision you make and it could, you could have a lot of regret if you don't do it correctly. So it's important to take your time and think about these things. Do your research. Okay, so time. If you have longer to invest, you might be willing to take on more risk. Um, the last thing is once you've got this, this, the, this, the idea of which strategy you want, um, which super fund you're thinking of going with, what's important to consider is the cost. The cost is super important. Um, I've read somewhere that a 1% difference in paying extra, so 1% difference in fees and costs can lead to 20% less after 30 years. And you might be going, oh yeah, that's in 30 years. But if it takes you 45 minutes to shop around, you could be saving yourself 20% of your, your future money. So it's worth just shopping around for a minute and actually understanding the costs associated with these. The point where people get confused is that they think that they select a super fund and then, oh, th this is the cost associated with the super fund. Now, there are multiple different costs, and we have a video on our website designed specifically for understanding the cost of super. But think about it like this. You select a super fund, so there's one cost associated with the super fund itself. But then there's a cost associated with this, there's a cost associated with this, and with this. So each individual strategy may have a different cost. So you'll be paying the super fund their fee, which is usually quite minimal now in Australia, but then you'll have to pay a fee associated with which strategies, with whichever strategy you choose, as well as there may be a fee to transfer between them or to, to initially select it. 
it's really important to read the PDS of the super fund and look at the fee schedule and see what exactly you're paying for the different strategies, the asset allocation, and then compare it to other super funds. So, um, you know, compare the super fund, compare the strategy, and then compare the costs associated with each strategy. I'm Owen Raskovich. I hope this video has provided some clarity on investment strategies and superannuation. For more videos like this, head to the Rask Finance website and cheers to our financial futures.